sounds like Welcome everybody. My name is Mina Jane and I am the director of the Ashland Public Library in Massachusetts. And I am thrilled to be here talking with Madeline Billis about her book, 50, 50 Hikes in New England, which um, we are excited to get to because it's perfect weather outside. We wanna be out walking and, and communing with nature. But before I get to Madeline, I just wanted to say a couple things. One is I'd like to thank the friends of the Ashland Public Library who support all of our programming. And Madeline for allowing us to partner with um, a variety of other libraries in the in Massachusetts and New Hampshire. And so I'd like to welcome the patrons from Lincoln, Methuen, Clinton, Stowe, Andover, Wayland, Tewksbury, Groton, North Reading, Manchester, Raynham, Maynard, Somerville, Wakefield, Rowley, Newton, Franklin, Rockport, Westford, and of course Ashland. So um Thank you for joining us tonight. I think it's going to be an amazing conversation because Madeline, oh, wait a minute. I forgot something. Madeline, you're going to put a link in the chat for buying your book. And um, if you buy Madeline's book in the next week, just send us a receipt and um, she will send you a signed book plate. So um, she can send you to the publisher, but you can buy it from anywhere and let us know and you can get that signed because, you know, signed books are gold. Um, so Madeline is currently the Deputy Lifestyle Director at Apartment Therapy, and she was the Assistant Editor at Travel and Leisure and Associate Editor at Boston Magazine, writing about New England's charming homes and destinations. So she is the perfect person for us to hear from about 50 hikes in eastern Massachusetts, because it's there's so many, right, Madeline? There's so many amazing places around for us to go to that, that are some that are really well known and some that are just not talked about as much. So welcome. Tell us a little bit more about yourself and then let's get right to it. Sure. Yeah. Well, hi, everybody. Thanks so much for coming uh, to this virtual event. I'm very excited about it. Um, but yeah, as Mina mentioned, I work at apartmenttherapy.com, which is an interior design website. Uh, but previously covered New England for Boston Magazine and Travel and Leisure and continue uh, to write about hiking, the outdoors and travel and beyond um, all around New England. So I'm a big, big fan of the region. Um, I graduated from Emerson College with a degree in journalism. And for all the folks in Massachusetts, I'm from Dudley, Massachusetts originally, but I live in Newton. So I was excited to see that the Newton Library joined the event. So hello to everyone in Newton. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I just say that um, Marie from Clinton emailed me this morning and said that there was an amazing article about you doing this program in the Fitchburg, Lemonster, Sentinel and Enterprise. Um, did they interview you? Yes. I'm sorry. I should have I should have mentioned that. Yes. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> a lovely reporter emailed me for that paper um, and wrote a nice story about this event. So um, if you're coming because you saw that article, that's that's great. <laughs> well, people do read, still read the paper. So yes, it's completely possible. Um, so yeah, well, I know you have a presentation and I'm going to ask for people to chat in the chat and put questions in the Q&A, but we are going to take questions at the end of Madeline's presentation. So feel free to just listen and think about what you want to ask. And at the end, we'll just throw them into the Q&A. So go for it, Madeline. All righty. I'm hoping uh, my presentation showing up here. Looks good to me. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so first, um, before I tell you about some of my favorite hikes from my book, you know, of which there are 50, I just wanted to talk about how I got started writing the book. Um, when I was an associate editor at Boston Magazine, I was covering New England travel and New England real estate. And an editor from WW Norton had seen that I was writing about hiking trails in the outdoors and approached me and asked me to write a book about 15 hikes in, in Eastern Mass. And she asked me if I wanted to do it. I said, yes. And that's sort of how the ball got rolling. And then from there, I just, I made this massive spreadsheet uh, of all the hikes that looked interesting to me in Eastern Massachusetts. Um, I had done, you know, plenty of hikes, but not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider myself a hiking expert at that point. Um, so this research phase was really important to get to know uh, all the different trails in the region. But something I sort of want to point out about hiking in eastern Massachusetts is that it's very different than hiking in other parts of New England because there's, you're not 
notching a lot of elevation like you would in the White Mountains, right? When I was writing the book, people would be like, oh, what's, what's your elevation number? How, how many hikes have you done? And it's it's not, that's not the case when it comes to hiking in, in Eastern Mass. It's more about uh, gentle walks. Of course, there are, there are a few mountains in there, um, but it's, you know, walks along the coast, along the beach, through the woods, by rivers, by lakes. Um, it's a little more gentle, a little more uh, walking as opposed to hardcore hiking. Um, and that's the way I like it, I think. But yeah, so, you know, after I had started making that spreadsheet, I narrowed it down to the 50 hikes that I thought would be the best to include in the book and spent um, the better part of 2018 hiking every weekend um, because I still, you know, I still had a full-time job at the time. So what I would do is knock out between one and five hikes on any given weekend between April and November of 2018 and, you know, take copious notes while I was on the trail, take pictures because I also took all the pictures for the book uh, and mapped my location with a little location tracker so I could make the maps for the book too. Um, so that all happened on the weekend, right? And then during the week, uh, before work, I would wake up really early <laughs> and write the chapter that I had just hiked um, before I went into my day job at Boston Magazine. So that is a little bit about how the book was made. Um, and then in terms of structure, so at the beginning of the book, there's a short description of every hike along with its difficulty level, its length, um, whether it's good for kids or dogs. And then something very important to me is you can know at the beginning of each chapter if the hike has a bathroom available because not enough hiking books will let you know if there's a bathroom. So mine does, which is fun. <laughs> But basically, so the hikes in the book are categorized by north of Boston, south of Boston, west of Boston, and then the bonus category, which is Cape Cod and the Boston Harbor Islands, which are where some of the fun um, hidden gem hikes are, I would say. So I'm going to talk to you about a couple of my favorite ones, and feel free to drop some questions in the chat or in the Q&A section, whatever works for you. And I might be able to answer them while I'm uh, talking or we'll do it later, it'll be a combination, but what do you use for a trail map wrap is a question that I see right now. So I had used RunKeeper uh, when I was writing the book just because I wanted an accurate GPS um, locator for the map that I would then upload to the computer and help make the map. Um, but I know a lot of folks love all trails. And I actually haven't used it very much, but I'd be curious to know if anyone else here has. But yeah, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Blue Hills Reservation. Um, you know, the hikes here are some of the most iconic in Massachusetts. And this picture here you'll see is from um, the top of Great Blue Hill. But basically, so the Blue Hills are huge, right? It's 7,000 acres. Um, the land was set aside by a man named Charles Elliott. Uh, if you don't know him, he's the founder of the Trustees of Reservations. Trustees, of, yeah, res res Reservations, which is the largest land preservation organization um, in the world, which is crazy. It's right here in Massachusetts. And he was also a student of Frederick Law Olmsted, if you're familiar with him. He's the father of landscape architecture. So what I'm trying to say is the guy who set aside the land for this park, he's a very important figure. Um, in the Massachusetts park system and in history. So in the book, I actually singled out two trails in the Blue Hills that I wanted to feature. There's Breakneck Ledge and the Skyline Loop, though I would say the Skyline Loop is a bit more uh, popular, and definitely, you know, widely recognized, especially because of this view. You can see the skyline of Boston. But the Skyline Loop, which is one of the most challenging in the book as well, leads to the top of Great Blue Hill. And fun fact, that's what WGBH now, GBH is named for, Great Blue Hill. Um, but when you get up there, you know, it's the highest peak on the East Coast from Boston to Miami, which is neat. You know, it's excluding Maine, but still, still a good fun fact. But the, the general gist of the Skyline Trail is you, you do a pretty steep hike um, up, a, up a rocky hillside. And then when you get to the top, there's Elliott Tower, which is where this, this picture is from. 
and you get those incredible views of the Boston skyline and, you know, all of the surrounding land, the ponds that are part of the Blue Hills um, out to the harbor. So yeah, this is three miles, which, you know, is middle of the road distance, but there's a lot of incline here. So it takes a little while. It's a two and a half hour hike. And yeah, it's one of um, one of my favorites. Oh, most libraries have passes to the trustees. That's excellent news. Um, there are, I don't know the number off the top of my head, but quite a few trustees properties featured in the book as well. Rocky Woods and Medfield is also in the book. That was, that's a fun fact here. Rocky Woods was the first hike I did while hiking for this book was Rocky Woods in Medfield and enjoyed a lovely pizza place in Medfield after. <laughs> Another thing about all the hikes that I did is I, I uh, wanted to have lunch in every town that I went to while I was hiking. So I went to a lot of houses of pizza uh, back in the day. And I would say, I mentioned before, I didn't consider myself a, a hiking expert, um, but I did consider myself a Massachusetts expert. And I became uh, even more so when I learned about all these towns that I wouldn't have otherwise visited, I don't think. Um, so writing this book allowed me to explore a lot of Eastern Mass in addition to the trails. But I'll move on here to the next hike on my list, another very popular one. It's Middlesex Fells, it's huge. It covers Medford, Stoneham, Malden, Melrose, and Winchester. Um, I like to highlight this one because it's one of the only trails in the book that's accessible via public transit. So you can take the orange line over to Middlesex Fells if you would like to. But here, the trail that I highlighted in the book is also called the Skyline Trail. Um, and the one that I did, yeah, is about seven and a half miles, which was a long day, um, but a lovely day in the woods. And I would say, you know, with all of these, you certainly don't have to do the whole thing um, while you're hiking. These are just the trails that I outlined and, and found to be the most scenic and sort of most interesting. So yeah, did about eight miles in the middle sex fells with my friend Tessa a couple years ago. But it's, yeah, it's a fun way to sort of spend a Saturday getting a little tuckered out. But this, this, these eight miles go through a variety of landscapes. So there's rocky hills, um, and maybe some of you know the word fells is a Saxon word for rocky tracts of land. Um, it goes by a reservoir, goes through plenty of woods. Um, and then, yeah, your views culminate in another stone tower, which I feel like is a a trend among the hikes in the book, where you can also see Boston from a different vantage point. Big fan of the fells. So I'll say I haven't, haven't been back in a while. Oop. Guess we're moving on to Broadmoor Wildlife Sanctuary here. So I'm, I'm reading a little bit of the chat while I'm talking. So if you hear me pause, that's why. Yes. Uh, that's another thing. All of all of the places that I highlight have plenty of trails in them. It's not just the one I've I've highlighted. Um, so there's a lot of ways to spend your day hiking around um, these spots, and they're really fun. But yeah, so Broadmoor Wildlife Sanctuary is in Natick. It's an Audubon sanctuary. This hike is definitely more of a gentle walk um, through meadows. You walk along the Charles River, which is really lovely, past an old mill, some little streams. That's great. <laughs> Broadmoor, you know. um, it's really, it's just so scenic and, and peaceful, I'd say. So yeah, you've got some idyllic little streams that you walk by. I remember seeing a lot of different wild um, mushrooms when I was there. And because it's an Audubon property, um, you'll see a lot of birds, obviously. Um, back when I was hiking for the book, I did not know as much about birds as I know now. So I'll have to do a little repeat visit to Broadmoor this summer. Um, but there are also otters, turtles, beavers, um, lots of wildlife to see when you're at uh, Broadmoor in Natick. See if I can make this. Here we go. 
I also wanted to talk about Moose Hill Wildlife Sanctuary in Sharon, which I feel like it's another Audubon property, but it's a little bit um, of a hidden gem. So this was actually the first ever Mass Audubon property tucked away in, in Sharon. I think this is a place where a lot of locals go, but it's a it has a good blend of you know easy walking trails. And then if you feel like doing a little climbing, you can climb up um, a rocky ledge here, which is pictured and you know, see some lovely views. You can see Gillette Stadium <laughs> from here, which is, is fun. But um so when you go here and if you take the trail that I've sort of outlined here, the three mile trail, you'll walk through an old farm. It's very picturesque New England stuff um, by a stone wall through some woods. And then, yeah, after you do the climb, you see this view in the summertime. I imagine it's a little more more leafy than this. I did this in early spring. Um, and you can see Gillette. There's an old fire tower up there, which is neat. Um, and if you go in the fall, it's a great place to see foliage, but there are also a lot of different, um, habitats here for, for wildlife. So you've got vernal pools and ponds, streams, a red maple swamp, um, and more. And, you know, if you're spotting all of these little habitats, you'll see bluebirds, warblers, owls, turtles, foxes, uh, coyotes do live here. Hopefully you don't see any on your trip. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of wildlife here as well. And so a lot of hikes in the book feature stone walls, including Moose Hill Wildlife Sanctuary. And another fun fact, because I guess I'm filled with fun facts this evening, um, is that the old stone walls of New England would circle the earth almost 10 times if you put them from end to end. And I can't think, I think, I would say the majority of the hikes in the book you'll see an old stone wall somewhere. They're uh, ubiquitous around here. Of course, it's hard to single out just a few hikes when I did uh, 50 of them, but I, I definitely do have a few favorites. These are some of them, and I have a couple of more here that I'm gonna show you. There we go. Uh, Mount Wattatic in Ashburnham is one of them. Mount Wattatic, Mount Wachusett, and the Skyline Trail in the Blue Hills are three of the most difficult um, hikes in the book. Again, I say difficult in quotes because difficult hiking in Eastern Mass is very different from difficult hiking um, in other parts of New England, like the mountains in New Hampshire and Vermont, for example. Um, but Mount Wattatic is a really lovely spot in Ashburnham. Um, it's kind of a steep hike up to a mountaintop. Um, the, on a clear day, the views are lovely. The day I went, you can see here on the left, it was a little cloudy, um, but still very scenic, very fun. The one in the middle here, Great Island Trail, is I think my favorite hike of all time. And it just happens to be in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, another one of my favorite places. And you know, all of the hikes in Cape Cod featured in the book are lovely, but this one uh, takes the cake. It is an almost eight mile trek through sand dunes uh, along the Cape Cod National Seashore. It's very beautiful. There's not a lot of tree cover though, so you'll want to wear a lot of sunscreen when you go here. But uh, a, fun, a fun story from my time hiking the Great Island Trail is so Basically, when you go, you you sort of hike along a sandy spit and to like an outcropping on the National Seashore, and then you make your way back. Um, and so when I was hiking back on the side, on the like, you know, Cape Cod Bay side where you can, in the harbor, you could see the Pilgrim Monument in the distance, uh, I decided I would take a dip in the water just to cool off because like I said, no tree cover, it was very hot did it in the summertime. And so I hopped in the water, went for a little swim. And while I was swimming, just sort of cooling off, uh, a seal popped up uh, alarmingly close to me. And I, it sort of scared me a little bit. And I slowly backed away, but I, uh, you know, made a prolonged 
eye contact with a seal in the water for a time before continuing on my hike. So that uh, was a unique story. And a lot of the hikes have, you have, I have fun little stories of things that I noticed while hiking. And I think that's part of the fun of hiking a lot of these trails is everyone's going to have a really unique experience and hopefully discover something new uh, in their backyard or you know, maybe it's an hour from where you live, but you discovered a new place. And I think uh, that's really fun. I see a question here. Do most of the trailheads have ample parking? Uh, they do. And if they don't, I noted that um, there's information about parking at the beginning of every chapter. And I also made sure. So there's um, the directions to each trailhead are in the form of an address that you can easily plug into your phone's GPS, for example, um, rather than, I don't know, just putting Great Island Trail in your phone and maybe getting directed to somewhere unfamiliar. Ooh, didn't mean to do that. Uh, if you type in the specific address in the book, you'll get to where you need to go and where you need to park. Um, which is great. And then the other one here, Halibut Point State Park in Rockport is such a scenic walk um, around an old quarry. And I'm sure the folks here from Rockport are very familiar with it. Um, but it's very, you know, it's beautiful circling the quarry, but you also get lovely views of the ocean. And Rockport is a special place to me be just because of how cute it is. And I hadn't been. I hadn't been until I started working on this book because I did a lot of hikes on the North Shore as well. So became enamored with motif number one, the iconic red fishing shack uh, in Rockport. Um, so yeah, that's, it's a, that's another example of sort of visiting a lovely postcard worthy town uh, before or after doing one of the hikes in the book. And I think that's sort of, my message here it's like sure you can do a three mile little jaunt through um the woods in one of these towns but the cool part is you know going somewhere you've never been exploring a town that maybe you wouldn't have visited otherwise and a couple others i wanted to shout out um that maybe are a little bit more well known uh walton pond and concord is featured in the book that is a lovely um leisurely stroll around the whole pond. You get to see, um, you know, where Ralph Waldo Emerson's little cabin once stood. No, not Ralph Waldo Emerson. What am I saying? It's Thoreau. Sorry. Fact checking myself here. Um, anyway, this cabin's there. I also love, um, for the folks who live in the city, Breakheart Reservation in Saugus is a quick jaunt up the highway. And that's one of the um, more heart pumping hikes in the book. And there are some lovely views of the city from over there. Borderland State Park in Easton is also featured in the book. And that uh, is especially lovely in the fall for fall foliage. Um, the mansion on the property is where part of Knives Out was filmed, if you know that movie. And the shack uh, in Borderland State Park was also featured in Shutter Island, I believe. This this is not from my notes, this is my memory, and I might be wrong, but a couple of movies were filmed at Borderland State Park, which is um, neat. And I wanted to highlight too, you know, I love the, the hikes in Cape Cod in the book, but the hikes on the Boston Harbor Islands are really a treat. Uh, and if you've never been out there, I highly recommend it. You have to take um, the ferry to reach them. But there are a couple of hikes, one on Lovells Island and one on Pettix Island um, that are really special and, again, offer great vantage points uh, of the Boston skyline. But I'd consider them much less crowded than some of the more popular hiking trails uh, around Boston. The Harbor Islands in themselves are, are just such a treat. Also, some of my favorite spots. But I wanted to say, you know, I put a link to where you can buy the book in the chat if you don't have it already. But I'm also going to put another link 
in the chat in a second. It's and it's <laughs> to my book's Instagram. So at 50 Hikes to Eastern Mass is an Instagram page uh, I continue to use to highlight, um, you know, the hikes in the book that folks are doing and and how they're looking in different seasons. So it's a lot of lo lovely hiking photos and 50 hikes related stuff. Oh, here it is. Check it out. I will put a link in a minute. Um, but that is the Instagram. And so if you do one of these hikes from the book this summer or this fall, feel free to tag this Instagram account and I'll repost your picture because I love um, sort of cataloging all of the images that folks take while they're hiking around. So I'll do that in a minute because I don't want to stop sharing my screen just yet. Um, but in a minute, yeah, I'd love to take some questions about the book, maybe some hiking recommendations that I can come up with in a minute um, and more. So I might stop sharing if that's okay. So I can go grab my link um, and we can go from there. How's that sound? Sounds great. Thank yeah. you so much. The pictures are beautiful. Um, Actually, Kai asks, do you have any recommendations for good trails near Burlington? Yeah, I'm sure I do. One moment. I'm putting, first I'm putting my link in here in case anybody okay. wants to follow. Um, so something cool, this is going to be hard to show. It might not show up. But something cool is you can see all the hikes. Oh yeah, there's, the background's not going to cooperate. At the beginning of the book, there's a map of Eastern Massachusetts. Um, where, you, where all the hikes are sort of like pinpointed on the map. So that is helpful when looking sort of like at a hike near, near a town. But let me do a little searching because I'm trying to think of North Andover is near Burlington. It is, yeah. See, my geography knowledge of Massachusetts, st it's staying with me. Um, but the Ward Reservation is a trustee's property, the Charles Ward Reservation. That's lovely and a little funky because um, it has like a sundial built into the ground in the form of stones. Maybe sundial is the wrong term. I would have to fact check myself in my book here, but uh, it's a stone <laughs> art piece that tracks the seasons. Um, Solstice stones. The solstice stones, that is what they are. Yes. See, this is this is off the cuff here. Um, and that's a good <laughs> that's a good one that's near Burlington that I would recommend that also has lovely views of the city. Mm -hmm. And that's in Andover, if that's not too much of a trek from, from Burlington. But I so um Joy says, do you have any interesting stories you can tell us that you have encountered along some of your hikes? I know you mentioned the seal, which is mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> I love the seal. Let's see, I definitely do. I feel like every every hike had an interesting story. Let's see. Let me let me think about that one as I, I talk about other hikes here because there's there's gotta be more. Um, oh, I'm sure. But uh, I did learn a lot about plant identification as well because I wanted to make sure um, I was calling out, you know, the plants you could see along every every hike, and so um, used an app called iNaturalist so ident to identify some of the plants. So I made sure I knew uh, what I was talking about, um, and would highly recommend downloading that app if anyone's curious about the plants in their backyard or on on the trails. Really fun. Um, I'm seeing a comment here about Horn Pond and Woburn. I have been meaning to go there for quite a while, and I actually meant to go a couple weeks ago, and my car broke down that day, and I never made it, so it's still on my list, um, but I didn't know that there was good birding there, so I will have to check it out. The app is called iNaturalist. I just put a link in the chat. Oh, about thank it. you. Yeah. Um, so... Ross wants to know if you've ever hiked at Rolston Hills in Fitchburg. It's both a former granite quarry and a place for graffiti artists to do their work with great views of Mount Wachusett. Wow. No, I haven't. That sounds like a lot of fun. I um, have to put that on my list too. I need to make some separate notes here. There, 
at um, Wampatuck State Park in, why am I blanking on where it is? This is a little quiz for me. <laughs> um, is it Weymouth? Hingham. It's in Hingham. Um, there is a really neat, so there's, there's some neat graffiti there is what I'm trying to say. Um, and I'm blanking on what the actual structure is. It's part of an old army base, I'm pretty sure. But anyway, the the spirit of it is you're not supposed to post pictures of the graffiti because it's meant to be discovered by folks hiking there and sort of kept secret. Uh, and I guess I'm really letting you guys know about the secret right now, but I did not, <laughs> didn't, didn't post pictures of it or anything. But anyway, uh, that is a fun spot if you're interested in seeing some graffiti on your hike as well. Are these places that you can do graffiti or is it just to see it? I just see it in this case. Mm -hmm. not, uh, not condoning defacing any of the state parks. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, maybe there are graffiti friendly places and I just don't know them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have to ask, how many pairs of shoes did you go through to get to all 50 height? It's a great question. Uh, and I have a boring answer. It's just one. I used a pair of hiking boots I already owned. And something weird is that it's the hiking boots that I still use. <laughs> they're very old at this point, um, but they're comfy and they haven't worn out on me. They're my trusty L.L. Bean hiking boots and they have not failed me yet. So that <laughs> worked in my That's favor. <laughs> a good plug for L.L. Bean. But yeah. so I have to ask about the publishing size. You'd, you'd started off with that. And I don't see any other questions just yet. So as they come in, we'll take them. But um, did your publisher sort of give you the format of what they wanted in like the, um, you know, the maps and the bathrooms and the, you know, all of that information that you sort of included? Or was that sort of something that you developed as you started doing the hikes? No. So this book is part of a much larger series. The, so there's 50 hikes in Georgia, 50 hikes in northern Pennsylvania. Um, so it was templated for me. However, there was a bit of freedom when it came to the formatting within each chapter, I guess I'll say. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of the maps, those all fit as part of the template, but the, the location data and the shape of the maps was, was my doing. Mm -hmm. um, something neat is another fun fact for everybody is that the image on the cover is at Nosset Marsh in East Ham, Massachusetts. Uh, and that's a photo I took. And most of the 50, the books in the 50 Hike series do not feature original photography on the cover. So they might be a stock photo for whatever reason, but um, this one is by yours truly and it's a Cape Cod hike. Did you use a particular kind of camera? Yes, my trusty Nikon D3000, which uh, now is, is quite old. Uh, you know, and maybe I'll get a new camera before I get new hiking boots, but uh, <laughs> the Nikon girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Lisa's interested in if you found any good, great waterfalls. Yes. Uh, so there is a lovely waterfall at, in the towns in Massachusetts. It's, what is it? Will, you know, if you asked me three years ago, I would these would be fresher in my mind, but it's um, Willard Brook State Forest. There's a hike in the book around, you know, a lovely part of the state forest, but, and then on the other side of the road, sort of near the parking area is a quick jaunt to um, a beautiful waterfall. And one of, I think the most scenic waterfall in the hike is at Willard Brook State Forest. And for folks who, you know, can't hike long distances, the waterfall is, is pretty easily accessible from, from the parking area. So you can sort of um, meander over there and see it. And it's really lovely. Did you get to swim in any pools as you were hiking along and finding waterfalls? You know, I didn't. And I'm wondering, I think that might be the only waterfall in the book now. Um, there weren't a ton. I feel like there are a good amount in Western Mass. I didn't come across many. Um, yeah, and I think maybe the only time I went swimming during my hike was at uh, the Great Island Trail in Wellfleet. But that's a whole separate book, right? I should write uh, Waterfalls <laughs> and Where to Swim. <laughs> well, Diane does want to know if you're going to be writing a follow-up book. <laughs> I, you know, I'd love to. We'll see what happens. Um, at the moment, I don't have plans to, but 
I know these books are updated every every couple of years, so it's very possible I'm going to have to uh, rehike all 50 hikes and, and make notes about anything that's changed. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Marguerite asks, and I think this is a great question, did you meet any interesting hikers on your hikes? That is a good question. <laughs> um, thinking back, I did chat with some people who wondered why I had a big old camera around my neck and a notebook um, and was sort of not <laughs> as relaxed as some of the other hikers on the trail uh, and told them about the book because they were curious. Um, but in terms of meeting any interesting folks, I would say just a lot of um, locals enjoying their the state parks and trustees properties and town parks uh, in their backyards. That's interesting that you say locals because um, you know, people seem to like when you hear about like the Yellowstone or whatever, people are coming from all over the country and all over the world for those places. All right, do you think that like Eastern Massachusetts maybe isn't as well known for, for its nature? Yes, I do think that. Uh, and it's especially overlooked when it comes to hiking, right? Um, when you think of hiking in New England, you're probably not thinking about packing up the car and going to share in Massachusetts, right? Maybe you're thinking about the White Mountains or, um, you know, the Green Mountains. Uh, so I do think it's overlooked in that way, but I think that is part of the beauty of it as well. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously some of the places in the book are very popular and, and a bit crowded, but I think if you want to spend some time doing some reflecting in nature, there are uh, 50 places for you to go do that. Um, and they're all, you know, beautiful in their own ways. And relatively close for us. Um, yes. Jen says, how is Eastern Mass defined? Is it mid-state trail boundary for East and West? I'm glad you asked because some folks in the, the like Amazon reviews, for example, <laughs> were really splitting hairs when it came to the geography. But what I'll say is that there are two books that cover hiking in Massachusetts. There's 50 Hikes in Western Mass and 50 Hikes in Eastern Mass. And so to make up for the nebulous Central Mass area, the Eastern Mass book inches into Central Mass, which is why you'll see Mount Wachusett, Mount Wattatic, um, Purgatory, Chasm in Sutton, and a few other places that maybe you wouldn't consider um, Douglas, Massachusetts, Eastern Mass, because it is solidly Central Mass. But for the purposes of these two books, um, I got it for the Eastern Mass side. <laughs> um, is that Purgatory Chasm? I love that place. Yes. Yeah. So that's in there. Um, and that's a really fun one. I got to do that one with uh, my brother and my mom, do a little, do a little climbing. Um, and that's something else that was really fun about hiking for the book and writing the book is uh, inviting some friends and some family to join me on all of these hikes that I had to do. And even honestly, some acquaintances who I didn't know that well, and then got to know while hiking, I invited a very new friend to do the seven and a half mile loop around Middlesex Bells that I mentioned earlier. That's uh, bold. We, <laughs> it, you know, I was like, why? What was I thinking? But we had a lovely time, uh, and became pretty good friends after that. So, that um, was a silver lining that I wasn't expecting. But mm -hmm. yeah, lots of friends and family thanked at the beginning of the book for joining me on the hikes. Um, Chris, Kirsten asked, do you mention in the book if and when hunting is allowed on property? I, so I talked about the snapshot information earlier where it's like, you know, here's how long it is, how, how long it takes, um, if there are bathrooms, if dogs are allowed. I, the hunting is not mentioned in the snapshot information, though if it was abundantly clear while hiking that hunting does happen at a certain point, I did mention it in the text, you know, like if you're hiking during hunting season, whenever that happens to be for that spot, uh, <laughs> you should wear, um, you know, blanking on the name, but the orange vests, the visible, yeah. the visible stuff. Um, but I, I would say that those were few and far between the mm -hmm. property where hunting was allowed. Mm -hmm. And what was your favorite super hidden gem? Mm. 
I do really love the hike on Lovell's Island, which is a Boston Harbor Island that you need to take two ferries to get to. Um, it's one of the lesser visited Harbor Islands, I think just because it's harder to get to. There's also no running water on the island, so you've got to bring oh. a lot of water with you when you go. Um, but yeah, it's a hidden gem because it's hard to get to. It's not very crowded, but you what you get out of it is amazing. So you can see Boston Light um, from one side of the island. And on the other side, you can see the Boston skyline very clearly. It feels like you can almost reach out and touch it because of how close this island is um, to downtown. And you can just sit there and either look at the lighthouse or um, look at the skyline and no one's around. It's It feels crazy in a large city like Boston. And I guess a fun story I'll say is that when I did hike Lovell's Island, I also camped there because you can camp overnight on some of the Boston Harbor Islands. And when I was sitting watching, you know, looking at Boston Light, which is a lovely time, uh, there was a rainbow in the sky. So that was oh. fun. <laughs> <laughs> you you camped in an, on an island that had no running water. Yeah. You, so you have to bring quite a few jugs of water to make it. I don't know how folks like stay for long periods. I only stayed one night, um, but they, they really... They're like, do you do you have enough water with you? You need to know. You need to bring this much, um, and they won't let you stay if you don't. You know, if you aren't prepared. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Um, Pamela asks, do you use a camelback for your longer hikes and also that island? Yes. Yeah, I was gifted um, one of those camelback water packs, uh, maybe midway through hiking, which came in handy, and I think I didn't realize how much I needed it. But then, you know, once the warmer weather came. Uh, it was a godsend. So yeah, I used that. I've got a big old um, hydro flask that stays very, very cold. Mm -hmm. I love. Um, and, you know, I keep plenty of water and stuff in the car too, just to have afterward. Because again, many of these hikes are not um, super aggressive. Um, so it's not like I'm going through a bunch of camel packs on my, <laughs> on my gentle walks. Um, but yeah, it, it depends. And Diane asks, what was the most unexpected or surprising thing to you and why? Hmm. I like that question. I guess I'll say, I'm, I'm thinking, maybe I'm thinking about Moose Hill Wildlife Sanctuary because it's fresh in my mind, but I think I didn't realize that so many Audubon properties or trustees properties had um some like steep rocky climbs in them mm -hmm. which was a pleasant pleasant surprise um to be able to do that and and have these lovely views at the top another place that i really like is um in dover massachusetts and am i i'm gonna forget the name of it now but it's another place where the no net woodlands um it's another place where it's a quick, uh, easy hike, but then you get to this one sort of rocky scramble and then you get up there and the payoff is this a lovely view of in Dover, it's um, the skyline. And then at Moose Hill, it's Gillette Stadium. But my point is that you, <laughs> you don't put in a lot of effort and you get a huge reward, which is not always the case um, with hiking. So that was fun for me. <laughs> Um, what hikes are on your short list for this year? Yeah, well, okay. Horn Pond in Woburn is up there. Uh, I'm excited about that one. I'm actually returning to the Whitney and Thayer Woods, either in Weymouth or Hingham, forgetting what town, uh, in a couple of weeks because the Whitney and Thayer Woods have a stand of rhododendrons. And you might know rhododendrons are blooming right now. So I want to make sure I get out there um, well, I can see them because when I visited the first time, rhododendrons were not blooming and they sort of create this lovely tunnel. They're almost like tented over the trail and they're very beautiful. So I want to go and see those. And that's another thing I'll say. A lot of the hikes in the book um, feature some lovely flowers. So I believe it's Monsley State Park in Newberry has this huge stand of mountain laurel that is uh, incredibly beautiful and and pretty rare for the area too to see so much um, mountain laurel. Mm -hmm. So 
let's see, Horn Pond and Woburn, Whitney and Thayer Woods, another trustee's property. And that is my short, short list at the moment. I guess I got to come up with some more, right? <laughs> right. So Brenda said, asked, did you encounter many off-leash dogs? Where we walk, our cats and off-leash dogs are a huge hazard. And I'm actually want to add to that, um, at least on the easy hikes, did you encounter people on bikes? No people on bikes on easy hikes. And if, um, you know, mountain biking is a part of the place that you're going to, um, I, I clearly outline that. Um, because you know to have a bike go whizzing by you without expecting it is not fun. Yeah. Um, in terms of off off leash dogs, I noticed it just a little bit. Um, and it's very possible there's more of that now um, than when I was hiking. I'm not sure. I remember the off leash dogs stayed pretty close with their owners in in the handful of times that I noticed it, but I wouldn't say. Um, the off leash part was especially concerning, but I I will I I don't know I think you're supposed to keep your dog on a leash light right so the places where dogs are allowed is noted, um, along with whatever else you need to know about bringing your dog there. Um, when you made your original list, what were the um, criteria for you? Yeah, well, first I took the most well known ones, right? Mm -hmm. um, I read a lot of other hiking books to see what places they called out uh, and then to find the more hidden gem ones. Something I did was actually looked up the geotag of a certain reservation, conservation land, state park on Instagram to see if it was especially uh, photogenic <laughs> because I wanted to make sure people were going to see some really lovely views um, or like, you know, nature environments. So that was big for me, directing people to some really beautiful spots. Uh, and then, you know, I, I maybe had about 80 spots and I whittled it down to 50 purely through research rather than looking. So I figured I did have backups and I thought maybe while I was writing the book, uh, I would end up nixing some of the hikes because they didn't seem good for whatever reason um but that didn't happen luckily uh which <laughs> worked out but in the end I chose the 50 hikes that I thought were worthy of highlighting for history as well so there's mm -hmm. a bit of a history lesson at the um beginning of each chapter before it gets into this girl trail description uh and that's really important to me as a history lover and a New England lover I wanted to make sure each place had, you know, there was something interesting to learn about it in addition to a lovely walker hike. So there's some funky historical facts in the book as well. That sounds, that's amazing. Um, Melissa asks, how long did it take you to research your book before you actually started hiking? Yeah, well, here's what I'll say. Not super long because my deadline was fast approaching when they asked me to write it. So they asked me to write the book in November. I started hiking that following April. Um, so I spent the time between December and April um, figuring out which hikes were going to be the 50 hikes. And I figured as I went along, um, I would learn more as I went because I sort of divided them by region uh, and then figured out which one I was going to do when or which one was more beautiful in the fall compared to the spring to try to figure out when to go. Um, so there was, you know, the initial research phase that took a few months simply because it was winter and I wasn't, you know, I couldn't really go hiking then. Uh, and then a lot of sort of on the fly stuff dirt throughout, um, my process of hiking. So yeah, April through November, 2018 is when I spent all my time hiking. Mm -hmm. And then how long did it take you to write the book? Well, I was writing it while I was hiking. So right. I, so a little over a year from, do you want to write this book to here's the book. <laughs> um, That's amazing. It's quick. Yeah, it's quick. So that's why I, I was, you know, hiking every weekend um, when I wasn't working and then writing it before work in the early mornings. Mm -hmm. Somehow worked out great. So <laughs> <laughs> 
a lot. So one of the things I read in the article, and I think you mentioned a little while ago, was that um, was that you ha- tried to have lunch in all of the places that you hiked to. Was there any particular communities that you just really enjoyed? Not just the food, but like, you know, you went to some diner and everybody seemed to like, you know, like Norm, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, first I'll say I, you know, when I was having lunch in all these towns, I made it a point to go to Houses of Pizza because that, um, you know, is something I really enjoy. And I would love for that to be my next book, actually, is chronicling <laughs> the history and the stories of the Houses of Pizza across New England. Um, so anywhere that had one, I definitely went. Oh, that, Madeline, um, yeah. I will be your wing person for that book. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're you're more than welcome. Um, I have thought about maybe pitching it. We'll see what happens. But uh, a classic Greek style pizza from a house pizza, there's there's nothing better. Um, and yes, you're you're definitely invited. Uh, I actually I booked um, a few overnights to knock out lots of hikes in one weekend um, while writing this. So I did an overnight uh, in Beverly, Massachusetts when I was doing some North Shore hikes and was really charmed by Beverly. It's hard not to be charmed by Beverly. Um, But I stayed in this, so there was this lovely house right near the commuter rail and they had a little Airbnb above their garage that they rented out, the folks who who own the property. Um, and they were really fun because they found out that I was writing the book and um, they ended up buying the book and, and we were chatting about it. So that was neat. Um, let me think of some other establishments I went to on my travels. I'm having to, having to think back now. Um, I really enjoyed Fairhaven or Fairhaven, Massachusetts. Uh, I went to a really cool seafood restaurant there that is exactly like what you're talking about. Like I was clearly an outsider because they didn't know who I was. Let me see if I can find it. Um, but I was really charmed by Fairhaven. And that was a place I had never been. It's really the south coast of Massachusetts. So that was fun to explore. Let's see. It was right near the water. I don't know. I'll have to think back. <laughs> Maybe when we follow up, we can see what... what uh, hole in the wall place I went to in Fairhaven, Massachusetts. Um, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, did you mention this already? Like how, how did they task you to do this? Had you been, you, you were a journalist, obviously, but how did you catch the publisher's eye? So at the time, if you visited bostonmagazine.com and clicked on the travel section, all of the stories you would read were populated by me. So they were all my bylines. Uh, And I assume this editor who was looking for a Massachusetts-based writer who knew about the outdoors and travel in Massachusetts to work on something saw that and was like, I'll reach out and see if she's interested. Uh, And I was, and it it worked out great. But um, it was sort of a leap of faith, I would argue, for the editor who reached out to me because she didn't really know me super well. Obviously she could see my work, but um, to ask a stranger to pump out a book in a year is is sort of a large ask. Um, and I did it, but I was sort of like, that's risky of you, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I mean, obviously you had, sh- you know, you had shown in uh, the travel section that you're um, you're quite capable. So I think that's amazing. I always find it interesting to like know how a book came to be. Yeah, it's funny. I didn't know a lot about how books came to be before I wrote this one, but I think more often than not, especially if it's a work of nonfiction, um, an editor or an agent will see a journalist's work and then approach them to see if they'd be interested. Um, I have a friend who wrote a book based on a splashy cover story she wrote for Time Magazine. And a book agent just so happened to see the story and approached her about writing the book. And, you know, they went they went from there and she did write the book. But um, it's funny how different sort of like reporting on a city or city journalism can be than the book publishing world because they're very separate. Um, and yeah, both interesting in their own ways, but. I definitely don't know a whole lot about the publishing world and I wish. <laughs> <more>. <laughs> Did you go on any kind of like 
book tour or anything when the book came out? It must have been during COVID. No, actually. So it came out in August 2019. And I oh. did... Yeah, event, an event at Brookline Booksmith to sort of launch it, mm -hmm. uh, which was really, really fun, really well attended, and went to a couple other bookstores after that and and libraries and um, so it wasn't it wasn't a tour, but I did do a couple of, of appearances and that was that was fun and now yeah when it, when it gets time to hike again I I'll, I'll talk about all my favorite hikes and I love to do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Well. Thank you so much for doing this, Madeline. I, you know, just from the comments, I can see people have been really enjoying it. Please let Madeline know what you thought about this program. I will send out a recap with um, the video link and some more information. But if you buy Madeline's book from anywhere, a local store, you know, always, always support your indies, um, wherever, just send me a picture of the receipt, no, uh, you know, information, personal information, and I will ask Madeline to send you a signed book plate. I will inc include that in the recap information. So don't worry about missing it right now. But um, yeah, you can also get the book from the library. You can also get passes to the trustees of, of reservations from most libraries. So that means you get a discount at all of the places that you would want to visit that Madeline has spoken about. Well, not all of them, but the, the trustees one. Um, so thank you, Madeline. This is fabulous. I am not a super hiker, but I feel like getting out there in nature and communing. So thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. This was great. <laughs> Absolutely. I hope you get out there. <laughs> oh, I will. <laughs> um, I mean, it just sounds so beautiful and so relaxing and, um, and also kind of interesting in that you see different things there. It's not just about nature, but you can see the skylines and the sunsets and the sunrises. There's so much to it that more than you expect. Exactly. Yeah. I think people hear the word hiking and maybe they're uh, a little intimidated by it, but um, hopefully my book is proof that it is just going, a hike is a walk, right? <laughs> just a walk. <laughs> With LL Bean shoes. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. Well, have a wonderful night and everybody have wonderful hikes in the next few months. It's perfect weather for it. Um, and I'll look forward to seeing you out there. Thanks everybody. Good night. Bye-bye.